Thank you. So it is my pleasure to introduce John Vandermeer. He is a professor in the Ecology and Evolutionary Biology uh, School. And his uh, favorite food is pianonos. I hope I got it right. <laughs> um, and he'll be talking to us about the inevitably, inevitably I'm not gonna try it again, of surprise in the food system. Thank you, John. So <clears throat> my discipline is ecology. And one of the major structures we understand to permeate almost all ecosystems is the potential for, or rather the inevitability of surprise. The food system being just another example of an ecological system is likewise subject to transformations that are surprising, thus we must expect the unexpected. Today I will share with you the idea of a fold catastrophe, basically a mathematical concept, then talk about the pests and their natural enemies as an example, and then give a speculative idea about institutional transformation. A physical landscape is a useful metaphor for understanding the idea of a fold catastrophe. The bicycle rider pedals into the swamp, but then can easily pedal back when they find that they are in the wrong end, when they find that they are in a swamp. But if the landscape has a critical transition, that is a point at which the rider falls off, the return is more difficult. Finally, if there is a fold in the landscape, as you might see in an overhanging cliff, the rider falls off into the swamp as before, but their attempt to return is hampered by the nature of the fold. An excellent example of the use of is the use of pesticides to try and control pests. There are no examples in the world of any organisms that are free of controlling elements, predators, parasites, and diseases, and those predators are also frequently subject to the control by the same pesticides we use to control the pest itself, which is the food of the predator. So if there is a fold catastrophe involved, as there is here in this example from the classical equations of ecology, we expect two ranges of equilibrium symbolized by these black curves here. In between, we have unstable equilibria symbolized by a dashed curve. Such a system behaves as before with the person riding the bicycle on the physical, physical landscape, except here the landscape is idealized and theoretical and the movement is the application of pesticides. If the predator also responds to the pest, to the pesticide, uh, but perhaps at a different and higher level of pesticide application, we can see the graph here connects there, but there's still a fold catastrophe driving the dynamics. If we just modify the graphs a little bit and come up with a, we come up with a situation that is known as a hysteresis. Indeed, what we have at the bottom graph here is what's called the hysteritic <coughs> loop. The idea if, is that if one is applying pesticides, it may be that pests are lowered at, a relatively, at relatively low levels of pesticides, but eventually as pesticide application increases, the predators also get affected. And the ultimate state is that the pest is at where it was at the beginning before the pesticide regime began. <clears throat> but note, if the landscape is of the fold catastrophe type, there is what we might call a hidden equilibrium where the pest is indeed under control and will remain so as long as pesticides are not applied too frequently. Obviously, what we are talking about is a transformation of the industrial capitalist agricultural system to the agroecological alternative or agroecology. Perhaps we cannot see that alternative since we rarely actually know without, without a great deal of study the nature of the landscape, but we can presume that it is there. But we cannot get to it because we are kind of stuck with the political structure that we have. Agriculture today can be dichotomized, an oversimplification to be sure, but necessary for a lightning talk. On the one hand, we have the industrial capitalist system with its attendant problems. And on the other, we have the practice of agroecology and the dream of food sovereignty. And the good news from the fold catastrophe is that the very surprise implicated in the dynamic structure, <clears throat> we may be able to push, we may be we may push the transformation in this direction, but eventually become frustrated because it seems that the, the industrial system continues to prosper. 
But eventually, boom, we reach the tipping point from which there is no return. This is an optimistic point of view. In their marvelous book, uh, Graeber and Wengrove report of recent LIDAR studies of the famous pre-Columbian site of Teotihuacan, famous for the biggest pyramid in the world. Actually, the existence of pyramids and related monumental civic structures are not necessarily the symbols of high civilization as I had been taught in my youth. Indeed, they are symbols of the needs of some narcissistic ruler who enslaves and sacrifices people to, to build them for his own glory. And Teotihuacan tells a hopeful story, not because of the pyramids and their fantastic sculptures in the temple related to them, but rather from the apparent overthrow of those rulers and the emergence of a seemingly egalitarian society that in the end lasted over 200 years, longer than that of the narcissists who needed pyramids to show their worth. Over the entire area pictured here, <coughs> pictured here there were apartment-like structures like these with little or no little or minimal evidence of any kind of a class structure, a true egalitarian society, presumably. Here we see the results of LIDAR study of a LIDAR study at the site, where you can see thousands of apartments spread over an area slightly bigger than Ann Arbor. It must have been a truly amazing place. So we can postulate that underlying the Teotihuacan civilization was a catastrophe both mathematical and analytical and metaphorical that even though it may have seemed quite stable, eventually it rapidly moved to the presumably egalitarian society that replaced it. Much as the industrial capitalist system of agriculture has within it the seeds of its own transformation. Thank you. <laughs>